Hello. This is a special edition of Fun with History with Professor Banks. Professor Banks is very laid back and ad cameo here. No hat, no props, no music. We're just going to do a little special Fun with History. Because um, if you can't say that last night was, was historical, um, you, you don't know history because last night we saw a very historical night that happened in the United States of America with the presidential election. And um, I don't know if any of you have not been following it, but for any of you who have not been following it, it was basically a two-person um, race between the Democrats and Republicans. Democrats being represented by Hillary Clinton, whose husband Bill was the president back in the 90s, I believe. He was, it was somewhere in the 90s. Um, and she was his wife during that time. And over on the Republican side, you had... Um, a very surprising candidate running um, on the Republican side, Donald Trump, who is a multi who owns Trump Towers and is um, very rich and very, um, very well known. Let's just put it that way. Now, going into last night, um, the consensus from media and from people. Th um, they believed that Hillary Clinton would get the nod for president of the United States of America, um, which would actually have been really great history, which would have been very historic history. She would have been the first ever female president of the United States. Um, but um, last night had kind of a shocking turn to it. And um, we did see history made, but probably... As I'm going to point out here on my little video, probably history not in the best of ways seen. Um, probably it's going to be history that isn't very good. Time will tell, obviously. Um, we don't know, but um, this is kind of how I'm feeling about it. But anyway, who won the election? Yes, um, Donald Trump won the election. Um, so he is now the president-elect of the United States of America. Um, he will be inaugurated in late January um, into the White House. Um, so until late January, I guess Barack Obama will still officially be the president. Um, but um, there will be a transition of power there to make that late January date um, the impact date. Now... Um, what's the implications of this? What is the implications of this for the United States of America as well as for the rest of the world? Well, on surface, if you have been following this election whatsoever, you would know that um, Donald Trump ran a very, um, very, very vocal campaign, shall we say vocal. Um, Donald Tr Trump um, said lots of things, and it seemed like every time he was opening his mouth, seemed like um, something ludicrous was coming out of it, and um, and he made some. Obviously, he didn't hold back on um, his uh, views on um, minority groups. Um, he definitely um, spoke a lot about the Muslims, how the Muslims are never getting into the states. Um, no more Muslims will be allowed to come into the states, no matter what country they're from, because um, of the threat of terrorism. Um, he obviously, um, a lot of things that come out about him being very, uh, very sexist too, uh, very harsh against females. Um... And he obviously has even gone as low as talked about. He has kind of hit the disabled people as well. So a lot of things that came out in his campaign that probably weren't very good. Um, and that's just what makes this a very, very concerning proposition with him um, having the reins of the United States of America for the next four years. Um, so, um, yeah, basically... 
Um, if you followed his campaign at all, um, Mexicans were another one, and obviously that was a big thing, the Mexicans. He said there's a lot of illegal uh, Mexicans living in the States and that he was going to build a wall between them and Mexico so that Mexicans can never get into the States. Um, so, um, and he also, um, he also talked about getting rid of ISIS by uh, bombing the heck out of them. So, a lot of things that he can't, came out in his campaign that are making it a very, very uh, concerning proposition with him taking over reins. Um, apparently, the states, uh, the big thing that happened in this election is a, st a lot of the people in the states, um, really, when, they, when, they, when it comes down to it, they felt like they had two horrible choices for a president because of... Hillary Clinton, um, it was not a very good, Bill Clinton was actually impeached as president, so um, they still remember that, and um, Hillary Clinton actually uh, wants to legalize abortion too, which a lot of people are, um, really are not too keen on down there. Um, so, yeah, that's what your choices were for your president. Um, I think, you know, I... You know, I, I'm sure I know both people have their thoughts, but um, to me, Hillary Clinton seemed like the way to go. Um, but that's not how they voted down there last night. Um, so anyway, what I wanted to share with you briefly here is um, just a little bit about that. Um, and when you think about the two presidents, the president that currently is in and the one we will get, um, it's almost like day and night. They couldn't be any more different. Um, Barack Obama has been in for two terms. Obviously, he made history when he became president. He was the first African-American black to ever be president of the United States. And when you remember back to the 60s that I was talking about, and even in the 70s, you saw how brutal the civil rights were down in the States. And you think, wow, they've come a long way. They've come a long way in uh, the amount of time to have Barack Obama as the president. And now we're going back to, now they've just voted in a guy who is a known racist, a sexist. Um, and this is the guy that's going to be in charge of the United States of America. So, is racism an issue down in the States? It might appear like it's still a pretty big issue down there. Um, considering, you know, people who voted him in, um, you have to wonder... Um, how racist they are to vote him in. Um, but, yeah, that's what you got right now. The, the stark comparison between those two, how different they are, Barack Obama and Donald Trump. Um, so, um, you have to hope. Now, you know, we got to give the guy a chance, I guess, and maybe he'll prove us all wrong. But based on what he said in his campaign, based on how he's acted and um, based on how he's handled his conduct in the public over the last quite a number of years and obviously all the allegations by women that have claimed that they have been touched inappropriately by him. Um, that's a pretty big dark cloud over him. But as I said, um, you have to give him, a, I, I guess you have to give him a chance and see what he does. But um, um, I was going to say, personally, how I feel about this is I think the U.S. is going to take three steps backwards um, with him being president. Um, already, even today, I'm seeing in the news that there have been some protests happening over the states about him getting in. So... Um, you think back to the 60s, right, with the protests that we had with the Vietnam War and different protests we had with civil rights. And you have to wonder if we're, we're, we're going back to that a bit. You have to wonder if that's where we're going to be heading. Um, but time will tell, right? Um, and it seems like uh, based on his platform and how he conducted himself, it almost looked like rights are kind of going to go out the window um, you're not going to see gay rights as much anymore. You're not going to see female rights 
be as prevalent, voting rights even. Um, and you have to be a little, you know, if he says wrong things, things come out of his mouth and he makes enemies, that's a bit of a concern as well. Um, especially enemies from um, other countries or um, terrorists perhaps. Um, but yeah, you know, I had to laugh at this because somebody said this at work today and I thought it was pretty funny. Um, kind of, they said, hey, you know, we just turned back our clocks one hour on the weekend. You're supposed to turn back your clocks one hour, not 50 years. Um, so that goes back again kind of to the 60s. Um, that might be where we're heading. Um, but um, hopefully, um, we hope the best, right? But um, I wanted to bring this up with you as well. Um, I brought this up on the internet, and this is a very interesting article. And this goes back even, 50, this even goes back past 50 years, but um, this kind of goes back to World War II um, when we talked about a man named Adolf Hitler. Um, am I saying that Trump is another Hitler? I'm not jumping to that conclusion quite yet, um, but I think it is a little bit leery and a little bit you know, a lot of things that seem to be in common with that. So, um, this is this is something that was written on the internet. Um, just to, just some interesting similarities, okay? We'll just say that. Hitler blamed all his country's economic problems on a minority group, the Jews, as well as on a few other minorities such as the Gypsies. Trump is currently blaming our country's economic problems on a minority group, Mexican illegal immigrants, as well as illegal immigrants from South America and Asia. Hitler had announced in advance that he would round up and deport all those minority groups so that Germany would be occupied only by true citizens. Um, <clears throat> in the summer of 2015, Trump went on network television in front of millions of people and has repeatedly announced that he would round up and deport all the undesirable illegal immigrants in this country and keep America safe for true citizens. He also wants to prevent all Muslims from entering the U.S., even those from peaceful countries which have not presented a terrorist threat, such as India and Thailand. Hitler never said that he would kill those people he could not deport or what would happen if they resisted being arrested and deported. Trump has not said what he will do if other countries will not accept the 11,000 people he plans to deport or what he will do if those people resist being arrested and deported. Will immigration officials be ordered to shoot people who hide, run away, or resist arrest? All people who protect or hide them be subject to arrest. What about family members who give asylum to elderly relatives or even young, healthy relatives they do not want to see deported? Hitler built walls around the ghettos where Jews were originally detained. As we know, um, as I've said before, Trump wants to build a wall between Mexico and the United States. In order to depart all these people, he will have to build more wall deport deportation centers and hire guards to operate them. He has not said what he would do about the 12,000 miles of coastline that surrounds the U.S. So many immigrants arrived in the U.S. by water. Does he plan to wall our oceans too? Hitler attracted huge crowds of enthusiastic followers who showed up at his rallies to listen to him rage about the Jews and assure his followers that he would be able to improve the economy if he was given free reign to deport them. Trump has attracted huge crowds of followers as well who show up at his rallies to listen to him rage about illegal immigrants and assure his followers that he will be able to improve the economy if he is given free reign to deport the Mexicans and block the Muslims. Hitler wanted to make changes to the structure of the German constitution in order to solidify his power and carry out his wishes. Trump wants to change the 14th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution so that he can deport American-born U.S. citizens and revoke their citizenship if they are children of illegal immigrants. Many citizens of Germany did not believe that they would be harmed because they had been loyal, abiding law-abiding citizens and in many cases had fought for Germany in World War I. 
Many Mexican-American families in the United States, including those who have some family members who may have come here illegally, do not believe that their family could be deported, especially if most members of the family were born here and the children are now U.S. citizens. Um, that's just, I'll just leave you um, with three more here. Hitler routinely broke treaties with other countries if he did not believe that the treaties were in the best interest of Germany. Trump has threatened to go his own way in international affairs regardless of treaties, trade agreements with our neighbors, and additional international agreements we may have with other countries. And that's actually a big issue too. He has threatened to rip up NAFTA and um, not have that anymore, which would be kind of concerning for the economy, I would think. Um, Hitler had no religious affiliation and did not feel guilty about the decisions he made. Trump admits to rarely attending religious services and that I don't bring God into the picture. He does not apologize for being outspoken and does not believe in being politically correct. However, after receiving backlash for that approach, he began to tout his Presbyterian background, although he could not recite a single Bible verse when asked which one was his favorite. He didn't even mention some of the best-known verses, such as the Lord's Prayer. Hitler was very willing to attack other countries, including using bombs on them. Trump has report repeatedly said that he would deal with ISIS and other groups in the Middle East by bombing the hell out of them. Quote Mark, that's what he said. So, um, yeah, so those are some of the similarities that they've come up with between him and Hitler. Um... So, um, it's, it's really kind of too bad that there's only two choices for the U.S. Um, although they do have independent people that can run, but they very rarely can make a statement enough to um, get the number of uh, votes they need to become president. So, this is, uh, this is history. This is history because... Um, Never has the U.S. had a guy come into power that has no government experience, that has no experience running a country, um, and a guy that is such a celebrity like Trump, because obviously he did The Apprentice on TV, and he's um, been in a couple other things, and of course he owns, I don't know how many Trump Towers across the um, across the U.S. and even here in Canada. Um, so that is um, kind of what we're, we're, we have now. Um, now, a little bit of encouraging news today was the fact that a lot of, I heard, I, I did hear that a lot of European leaders weren't going to have any part to do with him because they felt like he was a dictator and they weren't going to have any part of him um, or have any kind of relations with them now today i heard that although not surprising because they're buddy buddy anyway but uh vladimir putin of russia has called to offer his congratulations but um apparently um also the uh, per person in charge of the uk has called um, to offer their congratulations and say their work with him, um, uh, their work with him in a very open um, and free agreement. Um, Spain and Italy, their leaders, I believe, have come forward and said the same thing. So, and our Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, has also said that um, he's looking forward to working with him and his administration and is going to. Um, do what's best for both Canada and the U.S. and working together. So those are kind of encouraging. Um, although I did hear um, Germany, um, Chancellor of Germany says they want nothing to do with Hitler, which is ironic considering what they had in their past, right? So, but, um, so yeah, that's kind of happened today. So that's, um, and tomorrow, um, this is Thursday. Um, apparently, uh, Barack Obama and Donald Trump are going to meet at the White House. Um, and Barack Obama is going to start 
um, kind of showing him the ropes and making starting to make that transition. So um, it's too bad that we can't have another four years of Barack Obama, in my opinion, because I think he's been an excellent um, president, and it's going to be kind of it's going to be kind of um, it would be really sad if Trump undoes a lot of what Barack Obama has done in the last eight years for the country. But um, obviously Barack Obama is Democratic and Trump is Republican. So, um, But anyway, Barack Obama came forward today and um, uh, said he um, th gave his congratulations and said... Um, that um, he will work with Donald Trump and all the ways he can leading up to January to make the transition for him as smooth as he can. So very, very good on his part to say that. And Hillary Clinton has actually came out as well and offered her congratulations to Trump and um, urged all Americans to still be proud of their country and to um, give Trump a fair chance of running this country. So... So we'll see, right? But this has definitely been history in the making. Um, and not to say actually this hasn't happened before. Ronald Reagan was actually an actor, had no government experience whatsoever before he went in. But um, this is history in that regard too. So, so this has been a special fun with history. So um, I wanted to talk about this and... Um, just uh, share my opinions on it. And um, this is quite a hot topic button, right? So obviously, um, if you want to share your opinions below my co my video, feel free, share your comments. Um, and um, this is, and we'll see what, uh, what you think. Um, so um, there will be another fun with history. I think you're going to see two here this week. I'm going to try to put this up tomorrow night. And then Sunday, there'll be a normal one. And that's where I'm going to do our whole history in review. It's going to be pretty fun. I left you that little quiz to see if you get the right answers. But this has been fun with history. Um, and this has been a special fun with history on the presidential election, uh, the very historical presidential election of 2016 of the United States. So um, until the weekend, this has been Professor Banks. I'll see you then.